Hey, this is Mo Lunsford at Union Grove Lumber Studios. And this is the Shed Geek. We want to welcome you to today's episode. Hello, this is Susan the Shed Gal. Welcome to this week's episode of the Shed Geek podcast. I am with a very dear friend of mine today. I am in Skykomish, Washington. If you haven't been here, it's a be- absolutely beautiful area, and I have the pleasure of being with Becky Daly today. Thanks for having me, Susan. I'm so glad to be here with you. So glad to be here with you. Becky and I um, have been friends for about a year. Uh, we met in our previous life um, when we both worked for a company, and um, Becky now works for me. And we, um, we want to talk to you today about what we're doing in partnership with Shed Geek Rentals. Before we get started on that, I want to I learn a little bit more about your history. What have you done in your career that got you to the point, I th- believe a little over a year ago, that you got into the shed and metal building industry? What, what have you done in the past? Well, let's see. My background starts off as wildland firefighting and EMS with our volunteer fire department. Um, getting to know people, having connections, that's where my secret sauce is. I love that. I love people. And getting into this metal building industry and the shed business was kind of just a fluke. Uh, another friend of mine thought that the property we owned would be a perfect place for a shed business. So I did it. Gotcha. You've also, you've done truck driving in the past, big trucks, yes. semis. Semi so truck driving. Anybody need a hauler out there? Becky's your gal. <laughs> if you're around Skycomish, Washington. Becky lives in a town, I just looked it up uh, a few weeks ago, of either 180 or 188 people. This is a very, very small community. She's on a very, very busy two-lane highway, Highway 2, that goes from western Washington to eastern Washington, or the opposite way, depending on which way you're going. And when I first met Becky, I knew right person, wrong lot. Absolutely. Right person, wrong lot. And that that's very interesting because I've had this conversation with other dealers. In this industry, whether it be metal buildings or sheds, sometimes it's wrong dealer, right lot. Yeah. That's really hard. I think it's even harder when it's right dealer, wrong lot. And so she, Becky definitely had some challenges. Uh, and, you know, over our time getting to know each other, I learned that Becky's a really good person. And when we decided to partner with Shed Geek Rentals, we wanted to make a change and we still want to make a change, right? Yes. In the rent tone industry. What are some things you're working with many dealers right now? And we're, we, we're bringing on several big companies um, to offer our rent to own. But why? why? Why are we doing, in your opinion, why are we doing what we're doing when there's already a ton of rent to own companies, right? right? Yes, there is a lot of them out there. What, what are you hearing from the dealers that you're working with? And again, there, there's great rent to own companies out there. We're not here to slam any rent to own company. But what are we doing that's different? Well, what we're doing is offering training, how to use systems, what it's all about. And it's really great because you just get to meet people and help them learn the ways to do it. Yep. Right. So I think most companies and, and not just rent own companies, most companies feel like they provide enough training. They do, but they don't, but they don't. They don't. And that, that's been my, uh, my experience. We really hope that, um, we're upping the game in the industry and that's on all, all facets. I think you like myself, uh, f- probably frequently hear, I didn't get enough training. Yeah. You hear that? They just don't know how to use the system because nobody's helped them. Right. So I think what's, what's happened historically, whether it be in shed sales, metal building sales, rent to own, uh, you know, you're signed up with a company that offers rent to own. You maybe emailed some information and most dealers, I don't even think really look at it. Or even if they do look at it, they're really not getting it until they have to use it. I have heard 
and I'm curious if you've heard this, you know, well, I tried five years ago to sell a rent home building and it went sideways and I just decided it's not worth it. Yep. Oh, that kills me because my first thought is I'll bet you they didn't get the adequate training or support. And so, so tell me what you're doing. Becky is running the rent home department and we'll have a team underneath her. What are you doing? What's your first thing when you're reaching out? So there's a rather large metal building company that we brought on. What's your first step in reaching out to those dealers? They, they offer, in fact, three other rent tone companies. Uh, they were thrilled to bring us on when they learned what the plan is, what you're going to be doing with them as their dedicated person. So let me ask you this, Becky, when, uh, because we're hearing this, what sets you apart? What, what sets, sets me apart? What sets you apart in partnering with Shed Geek Rentals? What are you doing different that other companies may or may not be offering right now? Well, I am actually connecting with people and getting to know them and then sh- teaching them how to use the RTO system. I love it. Keeping track of who's done what, where, when, why, and how. I love that. And also making, just contacting them quite a bit to make sure that everything's okay and they understand and and letting them know that I'm always here for them. They can text me, email me, call me anytime, and I'll help them with their questions that they might have Mm -hmm. about our system. Are you hearing dealers say, oh, we've had that experience before? That, that they've had that kind of service before? Because I've never oh, heard no. a dealer say that they've they've had that service no, before. So they don't. as I understand what you're doing, you're initially contacting these dealers. Yep. You are setting up individualized Zoom calls, but it's not just Zoom calls on RTO. I mean, I've seen your process. You are literally walking them through, answering any questions, yes. but then you're also setting up with Miss Kayla. I am for the metal training. What is she doing? She does a great metal training. It's so awesome. I, I always am on the Zoom with her and yes. I just listen. And her she too is like, she connects really well with them. She has this great layout of how she goes through all the metal building information. And a lot of people are like, I don't, I never heard of that before. What's this? What's that? You know? And so yes. when they leave, they're really, they really feel like they know what they're doing. Well, I love that. And that, that's another thing. And I think many of us in the industry, when we work with, with a lot of dealers nationwide here, I just don't feel comfortable. I just don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that, and I, and I think we're seeing it very slowly. We're not going to fix anything that's broken. No. But we can do it a little bit differently to hopefully improve things for the dealers that you're working with. Yeah, I love it because, I I mean, training them and showing them and seeing the lights click on and they go, oh, it makes me feel really good because now they're not in the dark. They know how it works. So if you're if you're a dealer and you're not comfortable with well it, it could even be sheds i mean mm-hmm. it doesn't even matter if it's metal buildings we we see it a lot on the metal building side because that's the emphasis right now but if you get little to no training versus getting a ton of real life training obviously the person who gets the real life training and has someone to contact for the follow up mm-hmm. so it's not that dealers cannot contact the the manufacturer they certainly can but what we hear is sometimes it takes days f- to get an answer or they have to call four times and leave messages and they never talk to the same person twice and i think that is a real challenge for us as a dealer i mean i go back five six years and it was nothing but putting out fires for my team because we did not know what we were doing on the metal building side. It, it was like, here's your sign in, mm-hmm. here's our website, good luck. So I love the fact that you and your team are not only providing the training to literally walk them through the rent to own process, mm-hmm. which is super easy, very, very user friendly. And then but supporting them afterwards. That's, if I think, any the biggest thing. Yeah. That's- and the metal building training. And in fact, they can reach out to you for shed advice too. Uh, and that's free. You're not, you're, you're not charging for that. 
No, You're not charging it's free. for that. I keep, yeah. you know, people keep saying, what's the catch? There is no catch. No catch. You get what you give. And we, yeah, I believe that. Well, we've talked about that before in the past. Mm-hmm. And I think that as dealers, most dealers will give up or just say, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Without you know, they just don't even know who to ask. It's not that they're lazy or or don't want to succeed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was fortunate because I just had the attitude of, I'm not going to fail. But boy, that putting out fires. I mean, we wrote so many metal buildings and like every one was a nightmare because of the lack of training. Exactly. When I first started, first few months, I had no clue what I was doing. I had to figure it out. Luckily, I had some people that I could call that would help me. But the real good part was when I met you. Oh, cause you really helped me. She's paid to say that. No, (laughs) that's, we've, we've talked about that before. And again, it's, it's, you came in where uh, there was no training for you. You're, you're out here all by yourself and flailing and no fault of your own. Right. And, uh, we were fortunate enough to meet and, and, um, that was great. And here we are. So everything, everything happens for a reason, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I think the, um, I think that, I think that a lot of Rentone companies may follow. I hope they do. I hope they, I hope no one feels like we're slamming them or that they're not providing a great service. They obviously are. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're just going to take it a step beyond what is offered because of what we hear in the industry. And I know we are not the only ones hearing it. If we could, uh, Sam Byler and I have talked about, um, about, uh, we should put together a little video montage of the zoom calls that we do of dealers saying, nobody ever told me that, or I didn't get the right training. I mean, it literally would be mind blowing, but that's the way the industry is. And, um, I was watching one of the shed geek podcasts last night with Richard Mashborn boy, I'll tell you what folks, if you have not watched that yet, it's a two part episode abs boy richard is absolutely brilliant and just magnificent information but i think we saw this sometimes in the shed industry you feel like well we're the dealer and then we're separate from the manufacturer and then we're separate from the hauler and then we're separate from the rent owned company folks we are all in this together yes we okay? are it isn't just about the dealers Mm-mm. uh it isn't just about the manufacturer it isn't just about the haulers and it's not just about the rent owned company it's about all four of those working together and, and I'm seeing good things uh, in that. So what do you think the biggest challenge right now for the dealers that you're working with? Are you seeing the dealers that are selling more on rent tone? Well, obviously they're more comfortable with rent tone. The dealers that you're talking with that have not really done anything on rent tone, what's the number one reason why? Why, have, why are they not doing rent tone? What are you hearing? Because it's just difficult because... There's a form they fill out and then it goes to the company and then they no longer have any connection with that. So when it gets to the other company, what if something goes awry? Now your customer is going to blame you as a dealer because you're the, you're the initial contact, right? Yeah. And for us to all work together, we can skip that. Yeah. We can make it, Hmm. you know, I like that. I was out at, um, a metal building company in Ohio a couple months ago, speaking with the owner and, and the manager. And, um, you know, there had been a rent home contract with another company that had gone sideways. And again, it, it isn't, it wasn't the rent home company's fault and it wasn't the dealer's fault. It was a lack of training. Mm -hmm. There, there was a disconnect, but the metal building manufacturer is the one that got called and yelled at, well, they're not the rent home company. Right. They're just simply offering these companies and we, we see that. And, and I believe that what we're doing will literally eliminate that. I we'll, think so. We'll eliminate that, those problems because we're all working together. So as I understand it, one of the things that you are also doing that I have not heard of before is that you will actually even input the rent own contract if the dealer emails you the needed information along with the sales order. Now yeah. I've never dealt with the rent home company that would do that. Um, I'm not saying that all should, it is time consuming, but it, it's doing something that's different. Um, why do you think that a dealer might like that? 
Well, they could be really busy, right? Mm -hmm. And have a lot of sales and not enough time to put in all the information. So I'm fully willing to put whatever information in and get the quotes out if they don't have the time. So you'll actually input the information and send the rent to own contract to the customer to electronically sign. I think that, I think that's great. I think again, it's, it's, you know, I understand that most companies probably are never going to offer that service, but I think it's great that you are. Thanks. I think it's great that you are. I love it. Uh, It's going to, it's going to be really fun to see, uh, how this grows because it's growing very, very quickly, very fast. I think it will grow because, you know, sometimes people just need a little extra help. Yeah. And if we're here to help them. Yeah. I, I have had a couple people say, what's your ulterior motive in doing this? Mm. Uh, why, why would K- Miss Kayla offer free shed tra- sales training or metal building training? Why? Because it's folks, because it's the right thing to do and we want to help you. That's why yeah. uh, we don't actually have any ulterior motive. And um, it's giver's gain, right? Mm -hmm. What do you say? It's the way to go. You get what you give. You get what you give. Well, that's cool. What do you think, um, you know, the divisors on rent-to-own contracts are are very, very similar. Okay. These rent-to-own companies are brilliant people. They they know the factors that need to be put in uh, so that they end up at the end of the day making a profit. Otherwise, they couldn't stay in business, right? What do you think is more important, though, than a rent owned company perhaps being a little bit cheaper on the monthly payment? Do you think that the training behind it is more important or do you think that consumers just only want to save a dollar? Do they want to do you think they want to deal with someone who is comfortable in their skin and knows what they're talking about? Well, if I were to put myself in that position, the person that I would be speaking with, I would want them to make me feel comfortable. Like they know the system. They know how it works. They have all the answers for me and my Mm -hmm. rental. Yeah, I like that. I think um, Richard uh, Mashburn from uh, Banks Buildings addressed this a lot in his podcast that um, we don't know what we don't know. And I think in this industry, we forget. We forget that we don't know how many people stopped by when we were supposed to be at our lot and we weren't. We don't think about the fact that just because we have our big name name and number up on the road, people aren't writing it down as they go by. Uh, It's important to be there. It's important to be knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So this is a true life example. And it's Zoom taped, if any of you doubt my honesty (laughs) on a national sales call and it was opened up and the question was asked, um, you know, how do you explain rent tone? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was not going to jump in. Um, and I know of many other dealers that were not going to jump in because they know exactly how it works. It was interesting. Uh, a person jumped on uh, who's in a leadership role and said that, well, the way they explain it to their dealers under them and the way they explained it to their customers was that the extra costs involved in rent to own were to pay the dealer's commission and to pay the drivers to haul the building. (laughs) And I about (laughs) fell out of my uh, chair. And and I, I bring this up not to shame anybody, Folks, I bring this up because then it was reinforced by someone, um, you know, that had that had called on people to talk, saying, "Great job, thanks for explaining it. That's super," and it reinforced the fact to me that there are people in leadership roles in multiple different companies nationwide that they have no idea how rent tone works, and that that was really a huge eye opener to me, because then my phone started ringing. Like what, it, what, what, what just happened? <laughs> and, and, um, and, uh, it, it was really actually kind of sad, but it isn't, it isn't an isolated incident. It, it happens all the time. I had a situation where I was training a dealer several years ago and, and I had, you know, I wasn't in a training role. I was a dealer mm-hmm. that spent a lot of my time helping people who wanted help. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell anybody how to run their business. No. Unless you ask me and then you're going to get my opinion and it's worth what you paid for it (laughs) because it's free. It's free. Okay. 
uh, it's not my way or no way. There's there's people out there way smarter than me that do it way more efficiently and do it better. But if you ask my opinion, you're going to get it. Yeah. And I, uh, I had been asked to to work with this dealer, and she was fabulous. I, I'd go once a week and work with her, and I it, it was uh, let's talk about rent tone day. And I said, tell me what you tell your customers about Rentone. Because she had written a few up. And she said, oh, I, I just tell them that's the extra price for tax. Oh, boy. And again, I, I was just, I, I, you know, uh, I was just shocked. But I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Because I'd heard things like that before. Now, how do you, if you don't understand it, how do you teach it? Now, from your point of view, on a scale of 1 to 10, with what you know today, how hard is Rentone? It's really not very it's hard. Really easy. It's really yeah, easy. Once you get it like broken down yeah. and you can just step by step go through it, it's super easy. Yes. It's just when you miss a step that yes. it doesn't connect. And then when it goes sideways, it's like, oh, I'm not doing that again. Exactly. I'm not doing that again. And uh, I guess that's kind of what it comes down to is mo- uh, not most. A lot of people learn by actually going through and doing it. The problem is when you try to learn going through and doing it, when you have a customer sitting in front of you, that's tough. Oh, that is really tough. Look like you don't know what you're doing. Or they ask you a question. You're like, yeah, no idea. You know, what's the interest rate? Oh, I don't know what the interest rate is. When the answer is rent owns don't have interest rates. They have fees. Fees. Um, And, you know, uh, interest is a banking term and that's something you qualify for. Right. Correct. Credit based. Uh, rent tone. So it's different, but it's, but if, you know, if a customer is sitting there asking you a question that really you should know that goes, this goes back to the part they're going to walk out and they're not going to say, my gosh, that person has no clue what they're talking about. Not even that they know the answer. Have you been considering adding a line of greenhouses to your brand at cold spring enterprises? We have the perfect solution for you by incorporating greenhouse products into your sales location. Whether you're a do-it-yourself dealer or a manufacturer supporting multiple shed lots, you can expand your customer base. We offer easy-to-assemble greenhouse kits that will simplify the process of adding greenhouses to your lot. You can choose between two basic styles, an economy style and an A-frame style. We can ship a standard 8x12 greenhouse kit directly to your shed lot or manufacturing location. These kits include all the necessary components for assembly, except for the wainscoting or clear panels, door, and fan. However, we can assist you in connecting with the supplier for these items. Moreover, we also offer negotiable bulk pricing for multiple units. To help you get started, we are pleased to offer an exclusive discount through the Shed Geek podcast. You can receive an 8x12 economy or A-frame style greenhouse, complete with wainscoting or clear panels, a screen door, and fan. The pricing for a complete one-time display unit starts at $2,195 for an economy style and $2,545 for an A-frame style, excluding shipping and tax. For more information and to request bulk unit pricing, please visit www.shedgeek.com forward slash cold hyphen spring hyphen enterprises and fill out your information and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Or simply go to the Shed Geek newsletter and click on the greenhouse picture to fill out your information. Thank you for considering our greenhouse kits. We are excited to work together to bring greenhouse kits to your line of products. So again, you know, we, we folks, I would love to bring other rent home companies on. There are just absolutely magnificent companies out there. You're just doing something different. And, and mm-hmm. I love that too. And so here you are, but please feel free, you know, uh, contact me, be on an episode of Magnificent Monday with uh, the Shed Cal. I'd love to talk to you about, about, uh, you know, what you're doing in the industry and different things. Cause everybody's, every company's got their great things going on. Well, and you know, there's plenty for everybody. So we may oh. as well all do it the easy yes. way. Well, <laughs> isn't that the truth? I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, we are not going to. We have no intention of you and your team and Shed Geek Rentals taking over the industry. That isn't what this is about. This is about helping individual dealers one by one. Succeed, yeah. Now, that may be bringing on 500 dealers at a time with the company, but that doesn't mean you're going to do a Zoom call with all 500. Your your team and you are, right? You're still doing the individualized stuff. So let me ask you this. Once you have a dealer that's signed up on the Rentone, 
and they can do the metal building training even if they don't run the rent tone. There's sure. no right, yeah. right. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. So, uh, what? Let's go back to like the shed industry. What was your experience when you became a shed dealer? You you had charity is I who you were charity. speaking about. Charity worked for a dealer, maybe what 20, 25 miles from here. Yeah, she was literally, folks. She was thrown into the fire. Uh, some of you might even be able to relate to that. And she just did fantastic. She figured it out. She figured it out. I just love that. She was she was a really great gal. She just moved back east, I think. She did. She moved back to Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes. But she was super helpful to me. It was her idea to for me to use this property as a shed as shed lot. Yeah. And then she was like, You're you have a lot of common sense as a person. You'll be able to figure it out. And I did, but that I would get to yeah. certain spots and be like, call her. And yeah. Like, what is happening? Yeah. Well, and for those of you that know my story and you've heard this, I, I literally didn't know the difference between a two by four and a two by six. I mean, that's embarrassing and laughable, but it, it's my story. You guys are similar than And that way. having yeah. had a less than stellar experience trying to buy a shed, I mean, how hard can it be? Well, and I, you know, we, we hear this. In fact, Richard talks about uh, on his podcast uh, from Banks Buildings, going to six shed lots and not one person was there. And he then went to, and and I, I apologize, I can't remember if it was Lowe's or Home Depot, and they don't have the highest quality sheds on their lots, and sometimes they've been there for a few years. But he was there, and I believe there was 22 sets of people that were asking him questions. Like he went into sale mode, mm-hmm. um, uh, I believe a w- young gentleman who was getting carts out of the parking lot actually asked him if he worked there. But, uh, and he heard during that, those conversations, well, I went to that shed lot down the street and no one was there. Yep. Um, I know for a fact you were here. I was here uh, all When the you time. were open. It was, uh, it was amazing. And there, that there's something to be said about that. I don't understand where people uh, get the idea that this is a part-time gig and that, that it's going to be successful. Now, there may be some of you listening and they're, you're, it's your part-time gig and you're successful. Man, get on the phone and call me. I want to know what your secrets are because I'm not seeing that with the dealers I talk to. And I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of dealers with all different different companies. Um, you know, in, and in my experience, and I ended up running that lot about 18 months later, uh, which was kind of funny. I'm still waiting for the guy to call me back. So not only was he not there, he didn't return calls. And hey, we are human beings. It, it, I drop the ball too sometimes. Sure. Uh, not intentionally. Things things happen. You get busy. You forget. I get that. We're all, we're all human. But this is seems like in this industry, we think that, or some people think that, you know, you can just be there when you want to. Customers need consistency. They do need consistency. And so what are a couple of pieces of advice that you can give dealers, whether it be metal buildings or sheds or, or they do both and maybe they do greenhouses and play Mm -hmm. sets. I mean, it really doesn't matter. What are a couple of pieces of advice that you can give a dealer that may be struggling today? Um, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are make the connections. When I was doing it, I always got the information and called them back immediately. Yeah, that's big. We, we've talked about this and, and uh, you've got a new CRM. I do. Uh, and I'll, I'll give, I'm going to give a plug for uh, Shed Geek Marketing here. Hey, I, I'm going to do it. Dylan and his team and Wyatt and David, they are absolutely fantastic. Um, I've seen your new CRM that you're using for your dealers. It, it's amazing. Why, why are you use why, why are you using a CRM? And, and, you know, that's nothing more than a customer management system. Your customers are dealers. They're not people looking to buy a shed, but why, why do you think that the follow-up is important? Just to make sure that they're on track and they understand mm-hmm. what, what they're doing, you mm-hmm. know, as far as the rent to own side of it. Yeah. I was talking with the company last week, uh, and then I have a a very good friend in the industry with a different company, and and they're running between 22 and 28% closing ratio on um, customers for sheds that, uh, you know, they're paying for ads, 
they're running them through their CRM, and they're getting between a 20 and 28% closing ratio. That is spectacular. Yeah, the CRM is amazing. It automates a lot of the things that takes tons of time. When yeah. Now I don't have to look at all my Google Sheets and figure oh, out yes. who's done what and where, <laughs> when, and how. Now it's just right. there, and now I have more time to do the follow-ups yeah. to make those connections with the people who, that haven't gone all the way through the right. CRM system. Yeah. So I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of, it keeps, helps keep you organized. Oh, so much more organized yeah. than I was. Yeah. And so for you, it's working with dealers, but for the, our, our dealers that are listening, uh, or even possibly the manufacturers, it, it, it'll help keep you organized. I look back, I did not have a CRM. You know, a piece of paper is not a CRM. That's what I was okay. doing too. I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what a CRM was. I didn't know they were available. And there's some great ones out, of, out in the market uh, for, for shed and metal building dealers. Now, I think of how much more we could have done. Oh my gosh, yeah, because it just keeps track. Yeah. It keeps track and you don't have to keep track. Right. And it keeps you on like it just keeps here's you on what track. you here's what you need to yeah. do. Right. Yeah. So many times. Um, and I'm guilty of it. My whole entire team was guilty of it. So it's not I'm not knocking anybody here. It's just this is real life. We get so caught up in what we're doing day to day that I think we forget what that, happened yesterday? Well, I, at my age, I definitely forget what happened yesterday. Uh, or we forget what we need to do. Or I frequently hear, and I was really guilty of this. Well, I called and left him a message yep. three days ago, and I didn't hear back, so they're not interested. Well, folks, the people that are utilizing a CRM and keyword utilizing it, yes, their closing ratio was way is is way higher than mine ever was. Now sales came easy for us and then COVID happened and I think sales came easy for everyone. It is a different time. Uh it is it is definitely a different time. I also and A Richard, you're getting a huge a lot of shout outs today because um this is uh, so very true. You know, well I called and left him a message at two o'clock yesterday. Well then the question is well, what were you doing it to? Well, I was working. Well, did you not think they probably were too? They were too. What about sending them a text? Um, I heard a brilliant idea recently of if someone is interested in a particular building on your lot, mm -hmm. get up from behind your desk, go out, take a quick video of that exact building and Send text it, it to, to them. them. Yep. Like, that's brilliant. It's brilliant. And those dealers, their closing ratios are higher. We talked about this a lot in the past. Um, when I got into the business, and it was just a, a few short years ago, seven, we're just coming up on seven years ago, I was pretty much the only name in the game advertising on Facebook. Oh, and yeah, and when I say advertising, I'm talking free posts. I didn't, I didn't pay. It's a different time now. When you are scrolling Facebook, are you seeing a lot of the same things where we're no matter what dealer or what company, they, oh, they look the, the same. as far as the ads, they yeah, look the they same. all look the same. Yeah. That's why, like, w when I had my shed business, I did a lot of different stuff. I did a lot of videos or, you know, slides or... Yeah. You used, you did some really cool graphics, and I, I do not know the answer. Did you use, like, Canva or... No, what did just you on use? the Instagram and the really? TikTok, you can add things, graphics okay. and words and all kinds of stuff to the little videos. Yeah. Because your, amazing. your Facebook page, um, in a very short time, you, you had like 70 or 80 followers on mm -hmm. your Facebook page. And then the next thing I know, you're almost a thousand. Yeah. I just, I pretty much followed your advice. Who, what, where, when, why mm -hmm. was in my, in the text of the mm -hmm. ad. And then I would add videos and I would do it Every two or three days, mm -hmm. I would do one, yeah, and then I'd did. just let it settle. <clears throat> you did do that. And it, it was interesting, because I was watching, and I'm like, whoa. But it was, what I also saw was your consistency. Yes. And um, one of the things that I see, folks, and, and I've heard, and I had to do some research on this, because I didn't know the answer. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm never looking to prove someone wrong. No. I, I'm trying to find out how it works, because Instagram and Facebook have very deep pockets. Mm -hmm. They have very smart people working there. And as soon as we think we have it figured out, they're going to change the rules. Mm -hmm. So recently a dealer said to me, oh, I absolutely do not put 
my address or where I'm located in my post. Well, that's really important information. Well, but their reasoning was, is well, because Facebook makes it so that it doesn't pop up on as many people's pages. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I did some research and apparently it did used to be that way, but it's not that way before. Some marketplace groups allow you to have your phone number, others it blocks it out. I say put the phone number and if it blocks it out, that's okay. Um, I had a dealer reach out yesterday to me and he, and he said, I, 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 I'm doing a post like once a week and I'm not getting any traction. Mm-hmm. My first question was, how many groups are you in? Yes. And I know you and I talked about Hundreds. this a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like folks, if, if you're in 10 groups, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Uh, the dealers that are most successful are driving. What I'm seeing is they're driving customers to their lots mm-hmm. by their advertising. And almost exclusively, it's the dealers that are doing things a little bit differently. So one of the things that just, compl- it still cracks me up. I'll see a real, we talk, we've talked about this. We'll see a really, really cool building be posted mm-hmm. for whatever company. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter what company. And by the end of the day, half the dealers nationwide have posted that same building. Same thing. Yeah. Do you remember what I used to recommend on that? Mm-hmm. No. No, you don't remember. Oh, what was come it? on, big. My thing is, don't do that. Oh, wait three yeah. months and then post it. And yeah, never yeah. repeat. Never yeah. repeat. Yeah, because you don't want to look like everybody else. Um, so that dealer that asked me that, that said they're struggling. There was nothing in his post that set him apart in any way, shape, or form. It was just kind of blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and not his business name not where he was located. If you're afraid of using your address, which I'm telling you, use your address. That, yeah. That's my opinion. Now that might change in six months as, as Facebook changes. But what about putting on the corner of 143rd Street and Stewart Avenue? There you go. You know, in Muldrow or where, wherever it is or Mount Vernon, Washington, wherever, it doesn't matter. People are not going to search for your information. They're not. They're not. Customers... Potential customers, we are all, Americans especially, we are all, we want it now, right? Yep. Someone will say, well, if they click on my page or they go to my website, well, I've done that. And then I have to scroll to the fort, you know, to, to the bottom to is, find, yeah. they're not going to do that. And it's going back to, we don't know what we're losing out on. If you're losing out on eight sales a month Ugh. at the end of the year, I mean, what's your average commission people think about it? I mm-hmm. mean, um, if you're losing out on one sale a month, if you're, you might be losing out on 15 and it could be because you're not there when you say you're going to be there, you're not returning calls, your posts maybe could be improved. And there are people like you, like me, uh, there's, I know many dealers that you can reach out to and say, help me that dealer yesterday. I asked him three times, how many groups are you in? By the third time I asked, I knew he was in very few groups. Otherwise, he would have answered the first yeah. first time or second time. And what I found is about once a week, he's posting on Marketplace with no identifying information and a generic metal building picture. Yeah, that's not going to work. No. Now, he was using his logo as a picture, too. And my recommendation there was put your phone number on it. Yes. Because then if they block it out in Facebook, who cares? They can see the picture, right? It's true. But my suspicion is if the, he makes those little changes, he's already doing the post, right? Yeah. Uh, take take a week or two, spend 15 or 20 hours to get into hundreds of groups. It'll make you more money than almost anything else you can that's do. What I, that's exactly what I did is I just spent every day, I would say, I'm going to get into five groups. Mm-hmm. And I would get into those five groups the next day and do another five. I kept them all in order when I joined in a notebook. And then once I was in all of those groups, yes. on certain days I would post in that group. And then the next day I would post in these groups. And so it was like a, in the beginning, every day I had to post for a while. Yes. But there were different groups. Right. And so then right. it just sort of all comes together and now you're all over Facebook. Right. Then they feel like they know you. They do. They the na- see The your name, name recognition. Yes. Yeah. I think if I recall correctly, you kind of started 
close around you and then you worked I did. your way out. I started okay. close around me because this is this is my community. Yes. And then I just would go out further and further. And some groups won't let you in if you're not. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it just sort Skip of depends. Yeah, I would just, they wouldn't let me in, so I'd be fine. There's a million groups out there to be right. in. And I would just go as far as my sales, you know what I mean? So the metal buildings wasn't really a problem. The, the You stick have a bigger buildings, area. I did. I yes, could go way right. different states, go way out. Right. But the stick buildings, I had to stay within a certain amount of miles right. for delivery. But right. even then, most of my buildings or the stick buildings that I sold were east of the mountains. Right. So we're 50 miles from Leavenworth. Right. So it was perfect. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it was interesting because Becky is one of the few dealers that I have ever met. And there's probably a lot of them out there. I just don't know this. But I was actually getting my hair done <laughs> in Monroe, Washington, and uh, talking to the gal doing my hair. And she's like, oh, a gal gal just came by the other day and dropped off a, a brochure for your company. I was like, what? I'm like, wait, who? And she got it. I think that was before we met. That was before we met. Yes. Yeah. And I was, I was very, very impressed because, um, boots on the ground, getting your name out there and doing it. Now, do I believe that cold calling is the most effective way to sell a shed? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But what I saw you doing was multiple different things. So consistent posts, lots and lots of Facebook groups. And to me, I've had dealers say, well, I'm in a lot of groups. And my question is how many? I'm in 14. No, I was in like 110. Yeah. You might have even been in more than that. I yeah. Mean, I we, were, we were in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. Um, and it, so folks, if you're listening and you want some advice, spend some time and get in groups. It um, Do it in the evening. I used to sit on my couch. I'd have the TV on in the evening and I my husband would be like, oh my gosh, get off your phone. Yeah, well, this phone is what's making us money. Yeah. And uh, so I think I might know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask, did you always post at the same time of day when you did like your Facebook posts? No, it just really depended. I really tried to keep track because I didn't want to ever do it at the same time because I felt like the mm -hmm. ag algorithms, 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 yeah, I, f I just kept those in mind. An algorithm keeps track of what's happening and I don't want to mm -hmm. just get stuck in this one lane. And Absolutely. so I would adjust. It would yeah. just be a feeling that I would have. Yeah. Like when it was time to post. And sometimes I posted over posted. You know, yeah, yeah that, and that's a, that's okay. That's okay. I think probably I underposted, mm -hmm. meaning I was in oh hundred, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of groups. But because business came so easy for so many years, and eh, once a week was great. And I'm hearing dealers say, no, it's got to be more frequent. I, and I know some that are doing great, they're doing it once a day. Now, now there's always the person who's going to say, well, I came across a group and they only let you post once a week. Yes. It's true. That is true. Then only post once a week in that group. Yeah, right? that's the thing but that's about that's not them. the norm. No, you have yeah. to read the rules yes. of the groups. And then I would write down what I couldn't do next to it. Oh, I like so that. So that when I went to post there, it would just be a reminder. Yes. You can't post prices or you can't post this. Yes. Or it can only be in, you know. <clears throat> or you must post the price. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. that's, that's, I like that. So keeping track. And then when you're also on those groups, it's really good to go through those groups and like stuff because... That mm. gets you out there too. That gets your name mm -hmm. out there. If you're liking, then people are seeing that you liked their post. Yes. And then you become more familiar. They become more familiar with right. you. It helps their algorithms too. It does. Yeah. Right. Uh, I have seen several dealers um, that have reached out for help where they might have a contest or a giveaway or, mm -hmm. uh, or they'll do a really cool post and they'll ask a question and people will respond or people will enter. And then I don't see them responding. And I'm always, Hey, listen, if someone comments, comment back, always answer. Yeah. Yes. Always answer because those darn Facebook algorithms, uh, help. One of the things I'm seeing and I've, and I've heard recently, and I just recently had this happen was I had done a post mm -hmm. and I um, literally copied and pasted, deleted the post, used the same exact words, same price, same pictures, and it just blew up. It just blew up. 
So I don't know why. If anybody knows the secret of that, come on and tell us, and I'll share the secret with everybody else. But you, we can't, I guess if I, I could have taken the position that, well, I'm not going to post it again. I didn't get any response because it, I hadn't. There was like one click on it. You know, I also have had that same yeah. experience. And what I did was just set it back over here and yeah. wait a few weeks or wait a week and then I throw love it that. out again. So keeping track, I mean, it was a, it was a full-time job, yes. but I had the time. Right. Absolutely. So don't give up just because your post didn't work mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing the things that you need to do. And that's the who, what, when, where, why, and how. That's you're, the key. I'm telling you, it's key. Your, your customers or potential customers are not going to go looking for, for you. Give them the information they need to find you and be creative. Be creative. Be creative. Make um, every, every post yeah. you do, make it just a little bit different. Yeah. Whether it's the wording, how you lay it out, yes. whether it's the video or the pictures, put some, fi yeah. figure out how to do some of those graphics yeah. on a picture. It's so funny. It People love it. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I had a dealer. You're right. They do. I had a dealer recently that said to me, anytime we animate a post, we don't get any um, feedback. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And again, I'm not trying to prove them right or wrong. I just like want to know the difference or, or why that might be. What I found was it shouldn't affect it in any way. Mm -hmm. And then what I also found was, um, they, they had also stated that they get more spam when it's animated. And, and I hmm. couldn't find anything to back that up with facts, although it, it, it could be true, mm -hmm. but it was one post. We've all had spam where, Hey, send me a code. We, I just block those people. Block them. You just block them. It's easy. Um, but we, sometimes as humans, I think we have one negative experience and then we're like, well, it's never going to work. And that goes even back to the CRM and the follow-up system. I don't care if you're paying for a CRM, have some sort of a process in place because boy, I wish I could go back. I would have done it differently. Follow up, follow up our new processes until they say no. We're it's not, no, up. we're yep. following up. They're going to have to say no. I mean, we're not going to call them 14 times a day right now. <laughs> we're not going to do that. Um, but, we, but it's until they say no, then it's not no. And we give up too easy. Uh, we give up too easy. It's easy. Now that I like think about it, I remember people would get a hold of me, want to, want a quote on a shed or something. And then I'd send them the quote through the email mm -hmm. and then they wouldn't respond back. And for whatever reason, it would just go out of my mind because now I have another person. Right. So I would just move on. And Bright then, and shiny in front of you. And I never, th yeah, I never yeah. thought about, well, it might take them two months. So I got to, I need to do the work. Yes. Make the connection with them so that in two months, they're going to call me back. That's the other thing. So let, let's talk about that. Because that happens frequently. It is wonderful when a customer drives by and they say, I want that shed right there, or I want to order that metal building, or I want that place set, exactly. or I want that greenhouse. But that's not the norm. It's not. Okay? Only we're a not, We're not a gallon of 2% milk at, at Kroger. <laughs> um, we have, a, you know, a unique, uh, unique products. Greetings from the Shed Gal. As I delve deeper into the shed and steel building industries, I am thrilled to establish connections with friends who offer amazing products, such as Wendell Hostetler, the owner of VersaBend Tube Bender. At VersaBend, they thank you for your interest in their tube bender. The VersaBend is designed to bend two inch, two and a quarter inch, and two and a half inch square tubing, as well as two by three inch rectangular tubing in either 14 or 12 gauge. Powered by a robust five horsepower unit, it features two adjustable stops for setting your desired degree or pitch. Priced at just $19,500 and shipped from Abbeville, South Carolina, you can secure your VersaBend with a down payment of only $1,500. Contact them today to check availability and get placed on their order list. VersaBend is a family-owned business dedicated to providing an easy-to-operate bender made with off-the-shelf components. A unique feature of their bender is that it offers a full radius bend, unlike the double crushed bends produced by most other machines. Want to see it in action? Visit their website at www.csecarport.supply or give them a call at 864-446-3645. So let's talk 
about uh, branding, uh, if you don't mind a yeah. little bit, and your and your opinion on it, because we all have different opinions. I think the shed and metal building industries are changing. I think it's evolving. I think it's wonderful. We're seeing a lot bigger lots. We're seeing a lot more people with multiple products. Yep. And let's say you're with ABC Shed Company. And and I don't know of an ABC Shed Company, so I am not calling out any company, and I'm hoping <laughs> there's not a company called ABC Sheds. But we'll just use that for this example. If you are a dealer for ABC Shed Company, and you also represent, you know, F, you know, X, Y, whatever metal building company, and you sell, you know, uh, whatever play sets and you do greenhouses for another company, should you really be, you know, Becky of ABC Shed Company? What are your thoughts on branding as far as having your own identity? I think it's important, especially because the community that you live in, that's why I thought it was important for me to have my own business name because of my community. It, it, when you're connected with your community and you have that business name, they know you yes. and they are going to be proud of you and they're going to want to help you. And then it'll help push it out. Yes. I, I, and I fully agree. I, I am all about the branding. Um, part of the problem, I think when you have, let's say you have ABC shed company of sky mm -hmm. where we are or ABC shed company of, um, you know, Phoenix and mm -hmm. you have ABC when, when a cu potential customer is searching, mm -hmm. it is very difficult for them to find you unless they know exactly what, what you your named name yourself. Yeah. Now your company was Alpine sheds. It was super easy. It's Alpine sheds. Um, I, I understand that the shed companies like you, the dealers to be, you know, ABC sheds of, of, wherever sky comb. I, I i get that for their name recognition but is it name recognition that's important or is it selling buildings it's selling buildings right for sure i i fully agree and being I, from yeah. a small town if i took on a bigger company's name mm. it's no longer a community name right now that's an interesting that's how way I to look at it. it that's how i see it my community is not gonna they're they want to deal with becky they want to deal with me yeah, a small business community. But if I have a different yes. name from a bigger company, they're going to be like, right. I don't want to do business with these people. They do nothing for my community. I, yeah, I have not really thought about that before as far as that. Right. Because yeah. they want to do business with you. They want to do business with us as an individual. And at that point, it doesn't matter what I'm selling. Oh, I agree. Right, because it's you me. could have sold for twenty different shed companies, and it 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 had no, it would have made no difference. It mm -hmm. would either one you would have sold you would have sold the same amount for any of those companies because it's you because it's me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I because uh, people want to do business with people, right? It's true, and that was one of the reasons why I did the boots on the ground. Once a, one every other week, I would head all the way over to Wenatchee. I remember that. Or I, and I would work my way back through Cashmere, Peshast, yeah. and Leavenworth. And then the next week, I would head west. Yeah. I would hit Monroe, Snohomish, you know? And then the next week, I'd go to Chelan and then yeah. Inia. And I would just go everywhere Boots and meet on people. the ground. I would shake their hands. I would go to businesses. I yeah. would let them know what I have to offer. And they would send, there would be people who would drive all the way from Chelan here, which is Quite over a ways. hundred miles. Right. And they would be like, Hey, we, so I think yeah. it goes back to that name recognition and knowing you, mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned, you know, a, a few minutes ago about, you know, you, you do a quote and then it, it goes out of your mind because the bright and shiny it's person is in front there. of you, yeah. but that customer, it may be a process and, and down the road, maybe a couple months or several months. Oftentimes they don't remember who they talk to. That's true. That is true. They don't remember. They don't remember the company's name, um, especially if it's not individualized. Yeah, there were multiple times where people got a hold of me and thought I was a different company. Yes. And I would just, you know, explain to them who I was and yeah. they're like, but you're the one I that I talked to. And I'd be like, Yes, it's me. I got you. I yeah. got you. Yeah. So I think that that goes to show that even though we might not get the sale today, we mm -hmm. want those potential customers to think of our name 
Yes. When they're ready. When they're ready. And I think we forget about those things. Who do you think in a household between, and nothing against females, nothing against males, but who do you think in a household has the most impact on a buying decision for the average American family? You've got, you've got a husband and wife. Who do you think influences the buying decision at the end of the day more than the other side? I think the girls do. Absolutely. Yeah, they, because, yeah. I don't know, they just look at it differently. They like all the details yes. and all of the things to... The process. Yeah. It, it, it often takes time. That is true. Uh, Richard uh, alluded to or, or, or talked about um, they had a dealer that their average, I believe their average age was 32 years old, not the dealer, a dealer's customers. The average age was 32 years old, which was much younger mm -hmm. than what he was seeing elsewhere. Hmm. Well, it was a very young dealer who was doing a fabulous job marketing mm -hmm. to a certain age group. And so I think we forget about that too. Number one, if your posts look like everybody else's, uh, you, it's going to be a lot harder for you. It no is. doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, so being unique, doing videos, um, videos will pop up on more people's pages within a, a marketplace or Facebook group than a regular post. Marketplace videos are good too. Yeah. So every once in a while I would do a marketplace video along with my ad mm -hmm. not all the time but like just every once in a while i'd throw one in there yeah and it seemed to help so the it seems like the algorithms of facebook you're you're lucky if if you do a post in a group of ten thousand people you're lucky if 200 if it pops up on 200 people's pages mm -hmm. and if you do a video it about doubles the reach um, now it'd be nice if you had a group of 10,000 people and all 10,000 people saw it. I had a dealer, I've had several dealers, but one recently that said to me, well, the reason I don't post more is I don't want people to get tired of seeing them. And the chance of the same person seeing your post is, is actually very slim. Yeah. They'll have to go look for it, but you really want them to see it because they, when they're ready to buy you want your name. Yeah. Uh, you and I have talked in the past about hashtags. And mm -hmm. uh, what are your what's your opinion on hashtags? You know, I didn't really understand the hashtags. I just know that it was a cool thing. And whenever I did my Instagram, I would just make some hashtags up. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what they meant until I started clicking on them and seeing where they went. Yeah. Once I figured out where they went, I realized it wasn't helping me at all. So I've, I've heard that, and this came up, gosh, I don't know, eight, ten months ago with a dealer. And because I wasn't familiar with hashtags, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't trying to prove anybody right or wrong. I was just trying to get to the bottom of it because I'm still seeing dealers putting 18 or 20 hashtags in their post, and they'll have sheds or they'll have – and it's not that I don't occasionally use hashtag people. Right. Full disclosure, I don't have anything against them. If it's working for you, keep doing it. But it isn't meant to work that way. And without exception, I would ask the dealer, have you clicked on those hashtags? And no one said yes. No. So I started doing it. And then I did it from someone's phone who is not, not affiliated with anyone in the shed industry. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's go to this post and click on the hashtag sheds. Now, the first post that popped up was one of ours. Yes. But the next one well, was a competitor else's. and the yep. third one was a competitor mm -hmm. it naturally seems to draw people away because it isn't what you see from your phone mm -hmm. being in the shed industry it's what a potential customer sees so i was wondering if that was your experience too with the facebook yeah, yeah. it was i think it's i think the hashtags are mostly for the instagram yeah i'm not sure and even then i think, I think you're only supposed to use two or three yeah it does it look spammy to you when someone's got 15 or 20 hashtag it on does Facebook, to me yeah on it Facebook looked, yeah. yes on Instagram no because that's where they originated Originate. from interesting and because to me when I look at it and it's got 15 or 20 hashtags I'm just like well well <laughs> but I'm but I wonder if the and again if you're having if you're having good luck with it great mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not seeing that countrywide. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, someone may be having great luck with it because it has nothing to do with the hashtags and it's way, the way they're doing their posts. I don't know. But uh, almost exclusively, and it, it came about when a dealer came to me and said, listen, someone's advising me to use all these hashtags and I'm just not, I, I'm doing it and I am not getting any clicks 
I mean, this was over months and months and months. Mm-hmm. This wasn't a, they tried it once and it didn't work. And so they stopped. And the only thing they changed was they stopped using the hashtag, same pictures, and and their clicks went way up. Mm-hmm. So that's where it came about. I was like, man, we got to check into this. Yeah. We got to check into this. But I think it does look really spammy. Listen, we all know the potential customers know we're selling something when we're listing a shed or a metal building. True. Okay, there's no doubt about, no doubt about that. Let's go back before we finish this up um, and, and go back a little bit on the metal building side. It was about my 10th metal building sale when someone finally said to me, hey, you need to be looking up the snow and wind load for every address. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that was after I had already submitted them. That was fun going back to all those customers and saying, oh, by the way, um, I have no idea what I'm doing, and now it's going to be more money. It, it, was, it was not fun. Um, there are programs out there now that when you put in the zip code, it automatically inputs you. that. Yeah. Uh, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the software has improved greatly even in, in the last five years, just that's available to dealers. But those are some of the things, um, you know, the the differences between uh, 12 gauge and 14 gauge or the differences between vertical roofing and mm-hmm. horizontal. Uh, you know, I've had dealers say, well, I'm, you know, it's it's 40 feet long and I'm doing, you know, horizontal roofing because that's what the customer wants. Mm-mm. And my question is, did you explain mm-hmm. what will go sideways eventually, that it will leak most likely, or that Collapse. it's not as strong? It doesn't have the, <laughs> the girts and purlins and, and all those good things. It's not as strong. Well, no, because nobody told me that. And so sometimes I guess that lesson is, yes, customers will tell you what they want, and, and I guess you could take their word for it, but oftentimes they have no idea either, right? Yeah, luckily living where I live, we get tons of snow, so yeah. snow load and all of those things have are always at the front of my mind. Yeah. Because I, years ago, got a little metal car sh- a carport, right? Uh-huh. And that okay. was the things, like, is it going to stand up to our snow load? Is oh, that's it gonna huge. Is it going to slide, right? And so those are always really important things yeah. that I just automatically knew, even though maybe I'd never sold a metal building well, yet. Well, you, because, you know? because your experience, yeah, when i talking with dealers, oftentimes they're like, no one ever told me this. And I think that's it's part of the training that Miss Kayla's doing is it's, it's not for any specific company. It's a high-level to keep you out of trouble. Yeah, you want right? to you you know? give them the best quality building right. that's going to last. Yes, and options. And options. I'm not saying don't sell them a horizontal roof. Sure, if, but if they're if you in don't Arizona, want to. you can. Well, that, that's, that's, de- that's de- debatable. <laughs> well, when we get monsoons, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they're going to, yeah. That. And it depends. I mean, there's certain situation, but it comes back to the education so that we can give the customer the options. Yes. That goes on metal buildings about, let's say it's being put on gravel, and it comes with the three-foot rebar anchors. And, you know, if we are not offering, keyword Offering, offering the certified ground anchoring, we're already making the decision for the customer. That could also be said with like the loss damage waiver, True. Uh, you know, the the um, the forgiveness on the the rent home payment if it, if it's destroyed by an act of God. If if you're not offering it, you're making the decision for, for a customer. Them. Yeah, and and I'll tell you, this goes back to what happened to me in not offering something one time because I made the decision that they wouldn't want to pay for it. And in, cause in my mind, you know, I'm spending their money or not spending it and I'm trying to save them a buck mm-hmm. and something happened. And they, they, this customer said to me, you didn't even offer it to us. It was just, you know, it was horrible. And, and they were right. Mm-hmm. I made the decision for them. Folks don't make the decision for your customer. Uh, mm-hmm. get educated, reach out for help. Yeah. If I don't care what Rentone company you're using, the, oh, Becky, you, you're probably going to kick me under the table for this. <laughs> I don't care what Rentone company you're using. I don't care if it's a shed company, a metal building company, whatever it is. If you have a question generically on Rentone, reach Call out me. to Becky. Call me. And, and I'll tell you, her number is 888-917-8335, extension three. We want to help make this industry better. Absolutely. Um, From the rent tone side to the education, I could spend my entire days, seven days a week, 
charging for training. It is that needed in this industry, and I have so many people out. I choose to not do that. I choose to help people for free. I think that's your attitude as well from everything I've seen. Um, we really, really want to make a difference. Absolutely. Um, like I said before, there's enough for everybody, and we can help you. We can help uh, you learn how to do it and right. do it in an easy way. And I love that. We can help you. And, you know, I, I've had dealers that have just – that have reached out to me for years and continue. And, and then I'm seeing it come back around where they're now helping other dealers. That's great. And it's like that pay it forward thing. And there's some that don't want help. That's okay. We're not, we're, there aren't enough hours in the day to help everybody, but if someone wants help and again, I've, I've made, I did the craziest post last year and it actually came up on my memories just a week or two ago and uh, it was a crazy post. I even said to myself, should I, before I hit the post button? Because this, re- this, this building that had been picked up, I hadn't even sold it. The other dealer wouldn't allow it back on his lot. And uh, I was requested to take it, and I was like, oh, this thing has to go fast. Um, you know, I had a dealer that had reached out to me before it popped up on a memory because I had told her about this crazy post I had done that is like nothing you had ever seen that I've ever seen before or up since. And uh, she asked my advice and I said, I can't remember exactly how it was written, but I could write it up for you if you want to do it. And uh, then it popped up on my memories and she said, um, she said, yeah, it helped me. It helped me sell the one that I did. A, that I use that cra- nice. a crazy post on too. So it's that uniqueness. Um, basically it was something like this thing is the worst, you know, the bones are good, but it's, right. it's horrific. It's so bad. If you want to see the inside, you got to come to my lot because it's so bad. I'm not putting it on the internet. <laughs> and again, it wasn't the manufacturer. It wasn't the building. Right. It, it was what had been done to that poor thing. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I posted it as is you want me to cl- have it paid to clean out it's going to cost a whole lot more money and uh i said it's it's this price for i think i said today and tomorrow and it sold within 24 hours now i'm not saying that to brag Mm -mm. i'm saying it because i stepped outside the box and i did something different and i think that's what i saw in your post too doing things a little bit different um we think that we went you know oh everybody's doing it it must be working No, folks, most of those people are struggling and they don't, they just haven't had the guidance. You know, we think about these algorithms, like we're supposed to try and get into the algorithms. Oh yeah. I tried to do the exact opposite of what I thought algorithms wanted. I didn't do it consistently. I didn't do it on the same days. I didn't do it very much, but I also got in and I liked stuff. Yes. Commented. Commented and got my name out there and Mm -hmm. then... That's, I yeah. think, what probably did it. I yeah. Don't know. So I don't remember it getting any pushback from you at all, but there was a dealer recently that I said, hey, I'd recommend doing some, uh, some you know, selfie videos to mm-hmm. post, and she was mortified. And then I remembered, so was I. Mm-hmm. And, like, the first one I did, I remember, I think it was at my Phoenix lot, I believe, one of my Phoenix lots, and it took, like, ten takes. It takes a while. Because we're our own worst critic. And then <laughs> and then I just figured out, you know, just be yourself and say something. And pretty soon you get comfortable. Anyway, I am so proud of her. Her videos are awesome. And she's doing them regularly. I've never, I mean, the first one she said, I was just terrified. It was, the sun was in my eyes. It was horrible. I was nervous. Now, I couldn't tell she was nervous, which means the customers, probably potential customers can't tell. But she's doing it. And it, it's so fun to see people be willing to mm-hmm. make a change, but th- we don't know what we don't know. If I'm doing something wrong and no one says anything, guess what's going to happen? You're going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. Because my brain is, if I'm doing it wrong, someone would say something. That's so, our brains, but probably um, not yeah. normal person's yeah. brain. Yeah. And again, it goes back to someone recently said, oh, you know, uh, you, you'll want to you'll want to run the company, you know. If they take, you know, if, if they deal with me, she'll want to run your company soon or tell you how to run your company. I'll tell you what, that is absolutely That's so, so not, not true. me. It's not. But true. you know, when I have people reach out every day for help, and and then I see them take advice, and sometimes it's like, hey, I had never thought about this before, but a dealer told me this. Are you willing to try it? And then they try it, and it's really cool. In my head, I'm like, darn it, I wish I would have done that. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and that's part of why this is so cool getting to deal with so many people in this industry is I learn stuff every single day. It's true. Every day. Yeah. So going back to the Rintome before we wrap this up and then I'll, if you want to, you can ask me a couple of flash questions after I ask you a couple. Mm. Um, the Rintone is like just an overview as I understand it. Um, you're partnered with Shed Geek Rentals. Shed Geek Rentals. And full disclosure, I'm involved with that because I want to help the industry. Absolutely. I want to help dealers. It's who, it's absolutely who I am. And if you know me, you know that's true. You are reaching out to these dealers individually, obviously with the companies that the company is, is wanting to offer Shed Geek Rentals. You're reaching out to the dealers individually. You're setting up individual Zoom calls with them. Yes. You're walking them through the process. You're providing follow-up. Oh, I forgot about that. You had also told me that with the dealer's permission, even after the sale, you'll do a follow-up call. Yes. To get some feedback, and then it's another touch for that dealer. It's another touch for that dealer, and hopefully gets them a really good Google review. Absolutely. Yes. And on the other side of that, if there is an issue, then that information can be given to the dealer so that they can perhaps step in and, and make it right, because sometimes true. things happen. So that's really cool. And you're offering ongoing training. So this isn't a one-and-done thing. It isn't like you train them and then, oh, well, good luck to you. This is, hey, when, when you have a question... Call me. I'm your girl. Call me. Okay. I love that. 888-917-8335, extension three. I love that. I love I love the fact that you uh, picked up that business card to do that. <laughs> That's great. So flash, yeah, flash questions. Uh, what what is your dream vacation spot? If 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 I said here's a check, I'm not gonna do this, by the way. If I said here's a check, Becky, you need to go away for a month. Where are you going? All expense paid, wherever you want to go. Where are you going? I think I want to go to Italy. Oh, wouldn't that or, be amazing? Or Egypt. Egypt would be cool. Italy would be amazing, too. Yeah, I think that would be super cool because just the, you know. The culture, the food, the language. I love the architecture. Weather. And mm -hmm. so I love those really cool old History. buildings. Yeah. Okay, Maybe what, Rome. That would be cool, too. Okay, last flash question. What is your dream car if money was not an issue? We did have one participant from Shed Geek Rentals say a Toyota Corolla. So okay. that, that one has um, already been taken. A 2000 F350 Dually. Is that what you already Seven, have? Three liter. Is that, that what runs. you have? Yes. That runs. I need <laughs> some help because it's not okay. running correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. I I know. That's hilarious. Up. That's funny. Okay, I thought maybe you might say something different, but that's okay. You you want that really nice truck, but you'd want it to run. Mm, yeah, right. I guess you're going to get like, backlash because it's a Ford. I'm just telling you. I don't. That'll care. probably be edited out. Here's the thing: <laughs> as long as it starts and gets me from point A to point B, yes. I don't care what brand it is, what, what I color love about it you. is. I don't care. It just needs to yeah. get me from point A to point B. It would be nice to have a, a little fast car too, though. That would be fun. Yeah. So any questions for me? I know. I know you. You know me? You don't have any questions? I'm Well, you watch my Facebook and you know everything. I know. Yeah. I know. And we talk a lot and yes. I listen to the podcast and I just... I think you're wonderful, and thanks for taking me on Aww. and teaching me. And I'm, I'm honored to have thank you. Thank you, Shed Geek Rentals, because I'm going to do the best that I can do for you. Yeah, absolutely. You're doing an amazing job. I, I'm already so. hearing the feedback. It's absolutely fantastic. The dealers are very, very lucky to have you. I would like to uh, thank you, Becky, and thank you all for listening to this week's episode of the Shed Geek Podcast. We will be back next week for another magnificent Monday. Hey, this is Mo Lunsford in sunny Union Grove, North Carolina, and we want to say thank you to all the guests and listeners.